Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you guys are new. For today's video, I wanted to go ahead and talk about how you take really awesome client photos. I get a ton of questions about what camera I use, what editing style I use, and also how I make the watermarks on my pictures that I post on Instagram. So I wanted to go ahead and go over that with you guys. First thing I want to get into is that you do not need a professional camera to take your client photos. I literally just take my client photos with my iPhone in case you guys were wondering. I have an iPhone 11 and I use portrait mode for it. So that's exactly what I do for my client photos. Natural light for pictures especially and also foundation matching and concealer matching is going to be your best friend. You wanna make sure that your clients are sitting indoors somewhere but facing a large window or natural light source or something like that. Right now, I'm actually sitting in front of my window. I sat here on purpose just so you guys could see what I was doing. I'm gonna go ahead and switch my phone into portrait mode. I think you guys can see that here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take a selfie. Now I'm going to show you guys the picture that I took here. As you guys can tell, all my color looks exactly accurate. My skin tone looks accurate. Sometimes if you don't have the correct lighting, then it almost makes your pictures look really weird or maybe your foundation match doesn't look quite right. So that's why you wanna make sure that you take your photos indoors, but with a natural light source. However, if you're trying to take pictures indoors and you don't have natural daylight or anything, make sure you have your clients just step outside and take a photo. You might have to play around with this a little bit or the location of where you're taking the photos. Don't have them face away from the sunlight completely, but also don't have them face the sun sunlight directly. <laughs> if you have them face the sunlight directly, their eyes might be squinty or the makeup might almost look like it's a little bit too warm toned and reflective so you can't see the true color of the makeup. But also you don't want their back facing the sun because then obviously you're going to get this huge shadow and you're not going to have enough light. I'll just show you some examples of photos that I've taken. Let me just pull up my Instagram here because I can show you guys one that had okay lighting but I used artificial lighting for it. This is indoors but with an artificial light source so you can kind of tell that some shadows are going on and everything and you can't really see like the makeup colors in depth. This is a client that I took outdoors. She's just standing under an overhang in front of a salon door and as you can tell I didn't have her directly facing the sunlight because I didn't want any sort of weird shadows to happen or anything or her be blinded and squinting the whole entire time. And then this is one that I took directly facing a window indoors. You can literally see all of the client's facial features, what the makeup looks like. It's really true to color. And there's also no shadows or anything like that. Those are the three different photos that I wanted to show you guys to kind of give an example of three different light sources that you can possibly use. Sometimes you're waking up really early in the morning, especially if you're a bridal artist. Sometimes I have to get up at five o'clock in the morning and go to jobs and I have zero sunlight. This is the reason why you want to invest in a really, really good artificial light source that has color temperature adjusters. So this is my Glamcore light right here. It's a multimedia light in case you guys are wondering because it does have a little stand here where you can adjust your phone or also get a camera clip and put your camera on here. You do not need to invest in something this expensive when you first start out. This thing is honestly about $400. I started out with a ring light from Amazon. This Glamcore light though is really really handy to me though because it does have a little handy dandy remote here. There's three different memory controls that you can do kind of like a memory seat in your car. If you maybe you're on like a film and television set and you know you're setting up in the same place every single time then you can have that memory setting for it it's really handy honestly i'm gonna go ahead and blind you guys here to show you what i'm talking about so i'm gonna go ahead and press the power button on here on this remote right here you can actually go from cool to warm and then you can also change the brightness settings too so on this if i go brighter you guys need to be in this room with me i mean it's like so so bright and then if i went a little bit more cool can you tell how it's switching? So now if I turn it up a little bit, you can tell that they're almost more blue or cool toned. And then I can also go more warm toned. And as you can see, they switch to a more yellow tone. And then you can also press warm, neutral, or cool on here. So I can go neutral right here, or I can go warm, or I can go cool. You guys can see the three different color temperatures on that. So yeah, investing in a light source though where you can adjust these color temperatures is honestly going to be your best friend. For instance, if you're in a space where it's really, really yellow toned light, 
adjust this to the coolest temperature setting and it'll almost kind of balance out that light source. Same in reverse too. So if you have a really cool tone LED light in front of you or something, you can use the warm tone setting to kind of warm it up a little bit. So that'll be how you're getting the most daytime looking effect. You always want to make sure, especially if you're doing bridal work, that your makeup is going to look good in outdoor settings. If you guys have trouble color matching, your lighting source honestly might be the reason why. Then I'm going to show you guys how I actually create the little watermarks that I put on my photos. Watermark basically is almost like a copyright for your photos. It basically is making it harder for other people to steal your photos and use it for something else. And it's even important for makeup artists too, because obviously you don't want other makeup artists stealing your work from you. I just have my logo as my watermark right here. It says Julie Marie Artistry and it's my logo in the corner right there. And that is how I watermark all of my photos. I'm going to use the photo that I just took of myself not too long ago as the example. Okay, so I have this app on my phone called Eraser and every single thing I do from my phone, you can do it. It's really, really easy. I have a photo right here of my logo, as you guys can see. And basically what I'm doing with the photo is that I wanna erase the background on it. My font is black and then the background is white. I wanna get rid of the background because you want your logo to be completely transparent so you can put it onto images. You wanna go ahead and hit the erase button. And then I usually say target area. Your threshold right here, you can move back and forth. It basically is how large or I guess how wide you want your eraser to be, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and just tap the white area. And as you can see, it got rid of all of the white around it, but I still have a bunch of things in the middle here because there are some areas that obviously didn't get erased in between the J and on the P and like the A and the E right here, as you guys can see as I zoom in. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize the threshold area right here zoom in really closely and then er start erasing all these individual things. You can go up to it really closely and erase that. And then if you tap and then release right there, whoop, sometimes it doesn't work, there we go. It's really, really time consuming depending on what your logo is. Obviously, if your logo is completely solid, it's not gonna take that long. You're just gonna erase the background. But since I have individual loops and letters and it's in cursive and everything, mine's a little bit more time consuming. Let me go ahead and just say that I got all this done, right? I'm gonna go ahead and go into another app that I have on here, and that is called Fonto. And this one is actually going to put my logo on my pictures and it'll actually crop it into a square. So it's really ready for Instagram's format and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and say photo albums. Then I'm going to select the picture that I just took of myself. So then once you have the picture up, you're going to go ahead and go onto the crop tool right here. And then all you want to do is just zoom in however far you'd like. I usually zoom mine in just enough that you can see the makeup, but not like so close that you're just like, whoa, your face is there. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm gonna do mine right about here. And then I'm gonna say done and then done again. And at this point in time, you can go into the bottom left-hand corner here where these three lines are and go ahead and click that, say add image. And then I'm just gonna go into my albums and I have mine stored in my favorites. So I just know where my logo is all the time. And then the one in the upper left-hand corner is actually the one that I completely erased. I'm gonna go ahead and tap that one. Oh, I also made my logo white too. Um, I did save one in black and one is in white. So I go ahead and usually use the one that's in white, but you guys can do whatever you want to with your logos. <laughs> but I did erase this background. That's why you can't really see it that much, but it is there. So then I'm gonna click done. As you guys can see, as I'm kind of toggling it around here, it has the white with the clear background. You can't see any of the background, but obviously you can see the perimeter as I'm dragging it around. So I'm gonna say size, and then you can go however wide you want with this. Like you can adjust the width or you can adjust the size. As far as the actual size of it, I like to make it 300. I feel like that's the best size logo that I found for it so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch it up all the way to 300, went a little bit too far there. And then that way it's a really good size. And then I put it right about there in the lower right hand corner. So yeah, that's exactly where I usually like to place my logos. And then what you're gonna do is click the bottom right hand corner with the square and the arrow on it. And then I'm gonna say save image, it says save successfully. And then if you go into your photo albums over here, then that's your adjusted image and that's how it looks with the watermark. So yeah, if you guys ever wanted to know how I actually edit my Instagram photos, that's exactly how I do it. I do it 100% from a couple apps on my phone. It's really simple and really easy. That's I think 
pretty much it as far as what I do as far as taking photos and how I edit it and everything. Hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you guys did learn something, definitely go ahead and give me a big thumbs up here. And also, if you have any questions, leave those in the comments down below. I would love to answer any of the questions that you have. Anyways, I hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day and I will talk to you guys in my next video. All right, bye.